Hey guys, so I just wanted to go over a couple of things with you um, to make sure we are on the right track and doing what we're supposed to be doing. Um, yesterday, you guys were supposed to finish the digital water cycle stations and to check to make sure you learned what you needed to learn from it. There was a Google form on um, the last slide of your digital stations that you were supposed to fill out. There are people in every block who did not do this. That was for a grade. So when I put these grades into PowerSchool, if you did not do it, there's going to be a zero in the place until you get it done. Okay, so you guys need to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and staying on task. All right, so I want to go over the bell ringer with you today. Um, what's the difference between evaporation and transpiration? They are pretty much the same concept. In both situations, the sun is heating up some type of water and it is going up into the air as a gas. So it's when liquid turns to gas. The only difference between the two is that evaporation is going to occur over a body of water, like the ocean, a lake, a river, a stream. Transpiration is evaporation, but it's coming from trees or plants, okay? Because remember when trees or plants, when they get their water, they absorb it through their roots in the soil, and it carries up through their transport system up into the leaves, and if that water gets heated in the leaves, it rises up as a gas. So the main difference is that evaporation is the process of liquid to gas over a body of water, and transpiration is the process of liquid to gas, but from the leaf of a plant or a tree. All right, so your checklist today. You are going to do somewhat of a project today. Um, when we did our winds paper plates, we're doing something similar, but this time with the water cycle, and I'll explain it in a minute. But everybody needs to get their paper plate finished today in class and turned in, okay? Your Ed puzzle is due by Friday, which is tomorrow. Um, and then your vocab is due on Tuesday of next week, um, which is technically when I'm supposed to be coming back, except for my daughter tested positive now, so uh, I won't be back for a full day until Friday. Um, I am going to come in for half days starting Tuesday, um, but I don't know if I'll be here for your class or if your class will be one that I miss. Um, so either way, on Tuesday, that vocab's due because you're going to have your water cycle quiz on Tuesday. So make sure you're reviewing the stages and that you're really understanding what we're talking about. All right, so this water cycle paper plate. All you're pretty much doing is making a visual representation of the water cycle on the inside of your paper plate. You can do this one of two ways. You can section off inside of the paper plate like a little triangle for each section of the water cycle and just draw a little representation and label the stage. Or you can draw one big picture <clears throat> and within the big picture you can label the different stages. All right, and so the stages that I want you to cover are evaporation, transpiration, condensation, precipitation, infiltration, runoff, and accumulation or collection. Those are the main ones, the seven ones that you're going to be covering. When you're done drawing a visual of these stages, you'll flip your paper plate over and you're going to tell me a description of what happens in each of those stages. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I put my drawing skills to the test here. Um, so this is option one for how you can divide your paper plate. If you see here, I have my little title, Water Cycle by Miss Joseph. And then I would draw a picture of evaporation here, a picture of transpiration, condensation, precipitation, so on and so forth. I just divided it in half. One, two, three, four. So four times to make those different eight triangles. Since you only have to do seven stages, I use a triangle for like my title water cycle okay so this might be easier for some people um if you're not much of a drawer and this way you only have to do little sections so like condensations when your clouds form you could literally just draw a cloud here and write condensation okay so this is your first option for how you draw and represent the water cycle or you can do it like this and let's say this is your paper plate Instead of sectioning it off, you can literally use your whole paper plate to draw a scene, 
right? So if you want to draw a scene with clouds and then it raining and then it going down into a body of water, whatever, you can do that too. You can just make it one whole scene instead of seven individual pictures if that's what you prefer to do. But whichever route you're going, you have to on the front where you've drawn it, label the stages where it's occurring, okay? Now on the back, no matter which route you took, it's going to be the same. On the back, you're describing each of the seven stages that you drew. And you're just telling me what happens in that stage. Okay. So that's all you guys have to do today. It must be done by the end of class. And if you get done early, of course, work on that vocab and work on your ed puzzle. If you've done it all, then I might would make sure I am super familiar with the water cycle because you will be having a quiz on it on Tuesday. Okay. So if you have any questions, you can email me. Um, I'm checking my email all throughout the day so that I can help you guys when you need it. So yeah, good luck.